Ja, Achlan, was Achlan, ja, Shabab. Hello, guys and girls. To the second video of this short tutorial series. In the previous video, we just created a normal Docker container without a volume to show to show to you that if you turn off your host machine, all the data is lost. And in this video, we will do the same thing, but with a volume. So even if we turn off our host machine, the data will be still there. Or if, even now, we will even if we remove the container, uh, data will be still here. Uh, yes. So make sure that you have, like in the previous video, your Docker desktop started, or at least the Docker runs on your system. And as you can see, this was the container from the previous video. We will create a similar one, but this time we'll name it PG minus width minus volume. So let's get started. Okay. Now, like I said, um, now container is running, docker ps, with docker ps minus a you see all the containers that are existed once but they are not running yet. So let's clear this out. Now let's start a new co uh, container, docker run, minus minus name and like I said pg minus width minus volume uh, will be the name. For better readability, I mean, we can do everything in one line, but I will show you something. You can do this um, backslash, then do an enter. So you come on the next line and then you write uh, minus E for environment variable, like we had in the previous video. We will give the already existing environment variable Postgres password. The value, the value is password. I know, very secure. This is why you should, you should when you run a Docker container, a Postgres Docker container, on a production environment, even if on a in a dev environment or so, somewhere in the internet on a cloud machine like Amazon EC2 or somewhere on DigitalOcean or Linode, always uh create an extra user for your databases uh, admin user with a dedicated uh, password with a for this dedicated admin user never use the default one because as you can see you just have to type password and you're already in the database okay so much about the security stuff now again it's backslash come to a new line you can as i said you could without backslash you could write everything in one line but for readability, for you guys, we will do it like this. Now with minus V, as you might guess, this is for volume. Now we will attach the volume. Here we start with the source. The source is of course on the container itself. It already has a volume called PG underscore data. If it does not have a container with this name, PG underscore data, it will create a volume like this. But usually I think it already comes out with a volume PG underscore data. Anyways, colon, and now after the colon, we define the destination. The destination is, of course, on our host machine. And usually you pick here for var lib PostgreSQL, and then we say data. I mean, the, the destination you can choose, but this is the default destination for stuff like this usually. So let's let you know. Again, use the backslash. And then we do minus D for running in the background. And we define we want to use a Postgres 13 image like we did before. Now let's press the enter button. Okay, something is running. Let's do again docker ps. Yes, as you can see, pg minus with minus with volume is running. Let's check it also on uh, docker desktop. As you can see, the, the container from the 
video uh, from the previous video is not running but this one is running and uh, yes now let's go back to the terminal mm, like we did in the previous video docker executes and we want minus it for interactive terminal we define which container we want to use we want to use the interactive terminal with pg minus with minus uh, volume now oh, and uh, here we want to use psql to create a database again and for psql we have to define minus uppercase u which stands for user default is postgres again this is why you sh should not use in, in any kind of remote on any kind of remote server um, default postgres user always create a create a custom admin user with a custom admin password now oh, let's press press enter as you can see we are in postgres inside again we can list again what is here, backslash L. As you can see, the default three things which you also saw yesterday. Now let's create, yalla, create a database. Okay. How we, I want to give it a different name. Let's call it uh, dev user db semicolon at the end and enter create database okay a backslash l again you come if you press on the um, how's it called the upper key the the up key and then you should see all the Create databases, as you can see, our database dev user db was created. This one here. Now let me just with count. If you press Control and L, you will clear the screen. Um, we'll create a table again. Uh, okay. Create table. Now let's call it uh, dev user dev underscore user ID. It's a serial primary key. And then we have another column called name, which is type text. Okay. So with semicolon you enter statement now press enter create table uh yes and i think with backslash t you can also show all the tables ah okay no, not like this some something else it doesn't matter uh, now let's do insert uh into dev underscore user now what we are wanna we just want to want to insert uh, values for name now let's do this name and here now comes the values that we are going to insert let's uh, let's start with a lady's name again, and here we can use Sara. Uh, another username. Now we name uh, we take a male name <laughs> for equality <laughs> reasons. Um, Hassan. Oh, gosh. Okay, insert into dev username, values, uh, Hassan. Uh, yeah, yeah, let's do this. Now let's do again. Select from dev underscore user table. Sada Hassan, and now let's put like yes uh, two more names inside uh, 
Let's take Khadija and second name we take that it doesn't matter really Shady. Okay. Enter again. Let's select all the values and we have four values inside. Uh, okay, that looks good. Now we can quit backslash Q. As you can see, we are now again on our host machine directly, not not again on, on the in the container inside. And what we can do now is to docker stop pg minus with minus volume before we stop let's check okay it's still running so it looks good now we press this okay now as you can see the name was also posted here mm -hmm. Oh, looks great now it is stopped and now when we turn on and off our um, uh, host machine it should be still here so let's do this right now so welcome back i restarted also my machine as you can see nothing runs here so last time we start the container the, uh, with the ui desktop Docker desktop and now we will start the container via terminal. So you see this as well. So docker ps minus a there you take just the name No volume. Ah, sorry <laughs> with volume this time and Because this both containers they did run in the background when we created them They will also run in the background when we just start them. So just say docker start uh, PG uh, minus uh, with minus volume so okay as you can see here is running and if we just as you can see docker ps um, you will also see that it's running up since nine seconds now we can again take a look at the data if the data is still there uh, docker exec minus it minus docker. okay looks good and yes uh, so now we can list again all the all the um, databases dev user db is the first one we want to use here and we can now say Select from uh, dev underscore user semicolon at the end, and there you have all the data. As you can see, the data is still here, and the data will be still as well here when we remove the container. So I would say now let's stop and remove the container. Backslash Q clear the screen so you can see better I think so let me just see where is docker stop docker start docker stop stop it docker ps nothing runs also here nothing runs I mean if you are I'm showing you to you to prove it to you if you are a bit more familiar with docker and so on you will not check it like I do two times I'm just showing to, to you at the beginning how you can use the docker desktop and the terminal to verify that your steps are correct okay now we can remove docker rm for remove pg with minus with minus volume remove it got removed now with docker ps minus a uh, it's also removed here as you can see and also in the ui you will see no more only the minus no volume from the first video is here 
and this is great because we will now run the same command again to create the same container. Let me just uh, pull up the history. Okay. Now what I will but do here is let me just I will also show you as you you don't have to use this backslashes will also work without them so delete them. Okay. We will have now a one liner. Okay. Now, without the backslashes, this command would not work with the line breaks that we have. And yeah, I will just show you different ways to achieve the same thing. How you prefer it, if you prefer one liner, if you you can do it like this. If you prefer multi lines for better, I would say overview, you have to use the backslashes in the terminal. So docker run minus minus name, pg minus width minus volume, minus e for environment variable, and here we pass the password for the Postgres password variable minus v for volume. Here again, pg underscore data is the source, the volume on our container. If it doesn't exist, this volume pg underscore data, it will it will be created. If it already exists, like I said, it will just be reused. And then the after the colon slash var and uh, everything after slash var, like this part over here, everything slash var slash lib, slash Postgres SQL slash data. Um, this is on our host machine. This is on, in my case, it's on my MacBook right now, this path. And minus D for background, and we're using the, here at the last thing we define as the image we want to use. Press enter, got created. Docker PS. It runs, that's fantastic. And now we can again um, search the history how to uh, connect to it. Docker exec and it's interactive terminal and yes. Again, uh, now list again. Okay, user DB. And now let's see. Now we will do again, select, sorry. Select uh, star dev underscore user. Uh, sorry, so select from, of course. So select asterisk from dev user, the table name. And uh, we have the, all the data. That's fantastic. Okay, that's it for this video. It got a little bit longer than I wanted. Uh, in the next video, we will uh, do pretty much the same thing, but I will show you how to use Docker Compose YAML file, a YAML file with Docker Compose to achieve the same thing. And yes, see you in the next video. Hope you liked it. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe as you know the drill. And see you in the next one. Ilalik Kaya Shabab.